How to overcome your fear when solo camping. So a lot of people are pretty uh, not thrilled about camping alone. Maybe you really, really want to go camping, but you don't have any friends or any other people who will go with you. Uh, so you have to pretty much have no choice but to go alone. And a lot of people that completely turns them off and they just decide, I'm not going to go camping at all. But that's not the answer. You know, camping is fun. You get to spend time out in the great outdoors. But how do you feel safer when you actually go camping alone? So I have a few tips. I'm going to mention probably one of the most important ones, which is to be prepared. Be prepared because, you know, most likely nothing will happen. Nothing bad will happen when you're out camping. But there's always a chance that something could go wrong. And you want to be prepared for that. You know, maybe a bear shows up. Maybe something weird happens. You get injured. So it's always better to be prepared than, uh, or over-prepared rather than under-prepared. So being over-prepared, some people think, oh, you're being a little bit paranoid. It's more like being safe. So for example, before you go anywhere, make sure you tell people who you trust where you're going and where you're going to be. You know, tell your friends, your family, I'm going to be here. And if you're going to hike somewhere else, say, on this day, I'm going to be over here. So if you go missing radio silence for too long, they'll know to come looking for you. Because if you don't tell anyone and you hurt yourself here in the middle of the wilderness, you can't get any help because there's no cell service. People will know where you were going to be and where you last were. So it's kind of like a safety net of uh, for, for solo, solo camping. So... That's probably one of the most important things, especially because when you're out in the deep wilderness, you know, you have your cell phone with you, good chance you, you're not going to have any cell service. Satellite phones are good to have. They're very simple, but they can still communicate. Um, they're a little bit more bulky, but you know, if, if you are really going into the deep, deep wilderness, they're a good thing to have because you could be hundreds of miles away from the nearest town, the nearest tr street, you know. so. Of course, you have to kind of increase your safety preparations when you're really going outside of typical civilization. You know, you won't need a satellite phone if you're going on a nature walk, you know, in your urban um, environment. But continuing on from that, it's also important to be prepared in the sense that you have enough food and water. And of course, your equipment. So a lot of people make the mistake of not taking hardly enough, uh, hardly enough water or food and that's a big mistake you know when you're hiking you can very easily get dehydrated not fun a lot of people perish because of that uh, good idea is to bring a reusable water bottle uh, especially one with a filter or you could bring some purification tablets so that way if you find a clean stream you could fill up your water bottle purify that water you're good to go your food Lots of hikers and campers really like bringing uh, dehydrated meals. Either you could buy those or make your own if you have a dehydrator. Uh, and you just add some warm water and heat it back up and you're good to go. You could also, if you're good at this, uh, and if you have the right permits, of course you can go fishing. And uh, if you have experience gutting a fish and eating it, you could do that. You know, kind of free, free wilderness uh, meals right, right there. But people, for the most part, really do enjoy bringing their own food, like, you know, jerky is a big uh, popular option, sandwiches sometimes, and uh, just general snacks. You do really want high-protein snacks, especially if you plan on camping and hiking and camping and hiking for quite a while. And your gear should be top-notch. Now, you don't have to get the fanciest stuff on, on the market, but you do have to make sure you get something that will be reliable. You know, get a good tent, get a good pair of shoes, get good socks, you know get a good jacket, that sort of thing. Um, ways to make a fire, obviously. Uh, either store matches or flint and steel or ferro rod, things like that. That way, once you have your all your basic gear, you can rest pretty easy knowing that you have all the stuff you need to survive when you're out camping. Now then there's the problem of wild animals, right? If you're in bear country, you might have bears. If you're somewhere else, you might have wolves. If you're somewhere else, you might have some poisonous insects or snakes or things like that. So having a ham hammock uh, is a good option if you're kind of iffy about, say, scorpions. Say there's scorpions in your area or snakes or spiders. Uh, sleeping off the ground is a great way to avoid the majority of those uh, 
creepy crawlies. Now, of course, a hammock isn't going to save you from a bear. Um, in that case, you just kind of have to practice basic bear safety. Make sure you have your bear spray on you. Make sure you keep your food, you know, away so they can't, they're not attracted to it and that sort of thing. Good news is that bears usually will not bother humans, usually. Especially black bears, they kind of just stick to their own stuff. Uh, grizzly bears are a little bit more aggressive, so if you're in grizzly bear territory, you have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, but besides that, again, bears mostly stick to their own side of things. Uh, if you are really worried about bears, the best thing you could do is just kind of talk to yourself or sing or make some sort of noise so bears know that you are in the vicinity and they can just avoid you. Uh, because most of the times, bears will avoid humans when they're making noise like that. Now, this should also be taken into account when you're dealing with animals that you might not think are dangerous. Say you're camping in Yellowstone National Park. There are there are bison there and there are elk. And there are they are very, very large. Now, they, they won't eat you, but they may attack you if you annoy them. You know, I've seen people doing really ridiculous things. They go up to this bison, 2,000 pound bison, and try to take a selfie with it, and they get trampled by this bison. Uh, don't do that. If you see a very large wild animal, even if it's a peaceful animal, like an elk or something, just don't get near it, you know? Animals like to stay on their own side of things, you know, they usually will not bother you if you don't bother them, so just, you know, kind of stay in your own circle of things. Of course, you can admire them from afar, but uh, definitely don't get too close to them, because they're very large and very heavy, and they could seriously injure a person. Now, if you are worried about things creeping up on you in the middle of the night, um, Having a having a dog is a good idea. Now, I'm not saying a dog will save you from getting attacked by a bear or a wolf or something, uh, but a dog is good because they will most likely bark or growl or if something is moving around in the woods. So that'll give you kind of an alert, you know? Then you can get prepared, especially in the middle of the night, you can get yourself together and figure out what's going on. And another reason why it's good to have bear spray, even if there are no bears around, it is a very good option for self-defense, uh, no matter what comes at you, because it is essentially pepper spray, but ten times more damaging. Uh, very, very strong type of pepper spray. And it will do a pretty good job of keeping most things away from you. Um, of course, having a good knife on you is also important. Of course, you don't need to go full Crocodile Dundee with your knife, but having a good sturdy knife is good for defending yourself and also a very handy tool for when you're camping, you know, starting a fire or gutting a fish, that sort of thing. And of course you should most likely have an emergency plan, you know, if something goes wrong, something something uh, out of the ordinary happens and you are suddenly in danger, you should have a, an extra plan to determine what you should do if that happens. Now again, having a good pepper spray or bear spray on you will help with that, uh, or having some sort of weapon on you. That will help quite a lot. But keep in mind, if you are camping in a national park or something, they might not let you bring certain weapons. But also, good news, most national parks are very, very safe. Because, uh, you know, they're taken care of by the park rangers and things like that. So, if you're camping in an actual park, you won't have to worry that much. Camping in the actual wilderness is a little bit more dangerous. You don't know what's going to pop up. So, you know, just, just plan accordingly, depending on where you are, what's happening, what time, you know, that's all that. But... Those are pretty much my main tips uh, for, you know, getting rid of your fear for solo camping and increasing your safety. So using these tips, you know, you might still be a little bit on edge when you first start camping, but once you really get the hang of things, you should be way more comfortable uh, and you'll have more confidence out in the wilderness. So again, hopefully all this was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and maybe subscribe. And I make a few videos throughout the week, so don't miss those.